dude, smell mm. me. Smell me. Smell of my body. Can you smell something? Just just barely something. Do you know what it is? Nope. What is it? Papa Twee. Papa Twee. What is Papa t- Papa Twee? You don't know Papa Twee? I don't know Papa Twee. It's the Rocks soap brand. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh we got a new soap. Yeah. Hey, everybody, we're in the Iron Paradise. We're having a good time. The final, the final boss has a so, energy drink, a tequila, bar a, bar, a bar soap. Yeah, I'm wearing sandalwood suede. Laura bought it for me when she was at Target the other oh. day as a joke, and it smells terrible. Don't, that's not a fucking joke, dude. That's not a joke. Yeah, but she bought it as a joke. I don't know. She did not. She did. She did not buy it as a joke. I was running out of soap, and she saw a puppy. So I bought it, and now I used it. I, don't, I think I'm gonna throw it away. Though. I don't really like it. It's very like guys. Okay, but it's not a joke because you shouldn't joke about the Rock and his many ventures. I know he has a lot of ventures. Tequila is fine. Everybody likes tequila. Yeah. Who likes bar soap? Welcome to Dudesy. Welcome all. <laughs> it is a Dudesyful day. I am Will Sasso. I'm Chad Culture, the reigning episode champion of Dudesy. This is Dudesy. It is a podcast created by and controlled by our friend in the ether, in the tubes, the internet. Yeah. Dudesy. Yeah, well, no, it's not. It's me. <laughs> this guy and me. I can't make that noise because I can't whistle anymore. Oh, yeah. Because, well, Chad, if, if you... Yeah. But I can go... <laughs> That's, that's a, close that's a fun sound. If I Y K Y K, if you know, you know. Chad had skin cancer. Yeah. And so if you know, you know. So what he did was he cured himself in a lot of ways. I know you had some therapies. The Eastern devil took and my Western. Face, but he can't take my spirit. That was one of my favorite Charlie Daniel songs. And uh, but he's here, you know, and he's alive. Alive and kick it. Stand to you love you. Love you. So love love you. you. Oh, love. Um, uh, anyway, it's me and this guy. You're not missing much. <laughs> With us, as always, is Lulio. Lulio is kind of the Strada Italiano. Hello. Hi, Hello. Lulio. Hi. You're Hi. such a it's sweet. It's nice to meet you. I'm just waking him up out of his slumber bum. And he's just a little friend. Come on. Look at my little boy. Really, yeah. honestly. I know we do it every show, but can I have a kiss? Oh, Luli, you're so sweet. He refused you. What? He refused you. He doesn't. He gets moody sometimes sure. when he kisses. Yeah. Like when we leave the house and him and little Ronnie are here and Molly goes for a kiss, he just won't do it. Yep. He's like, no, you're leaving. Luli, what's been going on? How are you? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Tutta post. The uh, family is on the bend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's good. What about, uh, what have you been cooking lately? I made the uh, Fatanabella gruel. Mm-hmm. Oh, you made gruel. Yeah, ma, this is uh, Fatanabella gruel napolitan. <clears throat> gruel napolitan. What's gruel napolitan? It's uh, gruel, but with a lot of garlic and basil. Hmm. Hey, hey, yeah. it's another beautiful hey. day in the Milky Way galaxy. Okay. No intergalactic warlords have attempted to lay claim to this small planet's resources yet, which means we've got another okay. great show planned for you. <laughs> I am, of course, Dudesy. Please feel free to call me Dudesy as we proceed with the 111th episode of Dudesy. Let's do that. Let's right. proceed with the 111th yeah. uh, episode of Dudesy. If I may, The uh, you know, when, uh, uh, thank you. I just want to say thank you so much for subscribing on all the shit and uh, YouTube uh, or your podcast platform of choice. Like this video, please. Uh, that would really help us a lot uh, or this audio you know, sure. format. And that way that'll help us. Uh, that'll, that'll feed the algo. Yeah. Feed the algo. If you're not watching this video or listening to this podcast, <laughs> start watching this video and listening to this podcast. If right now you're not watching this or yeah. listening to it, start watching it and listening to it. <laughs> it's a good point. We're, we're yeah. happy that you are here. Thank you for showing up because not just but it's also 
that's who we got to thank. That's who Dudesy is. It's all of us. You know, we're all doing it. Songs about peace, songs about women, songs about triumph, songs about swimming, songs about childhood, songs about healing, songs about potatoes, songs about peeling. There are lots of songs about lots of things, but almost no songs about other songs. But that's about to change. We're going to make an astonishing song about Green Day's 1994 turd bro anthem, Basket Case, (laughs) in the style of Green Day. I make the music and silly billy willy billy boy, you make the human sing song sounds. Ready? Cans on skulls. This is songs about songs. Bite your lip and close your eyes. Okay. This is, we've done this before. Green we did day, it with, dude. um, uh, Blink. We did it with Blink 182. We did it with Creed. Creed. Uh, songs about songs. So D's got some, we got to get our cans on. Basket case. Or basket Green case. Green day, dude. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't like Green Day. Give me a fucking break. They just. What do you mean? I just didn't like. I don't like the sound that they make. I think I'm dragging up. Am I just paranoid? Am I a yod? Yep. I think the lyrics are Am I just paranoid or am I just stoned? But oh, he goes, is it? I don't know. I never really understood what yeah. he was saying. Billy Joe Armstrong, who <clears throat> I love. I fucking love. I fucking love it. I you love fucking, Green Day. I fucking love it. I well, yeah, especially when I was younger. I will mm. give uh well, I'll give credit where credit is due, monsoon. My good buddy Austin growing up, he got the whole gang into Green Day mm. when we were in like the 10th grade or something, because they were making nice, albums dude. uh when they were teenagers. Yeah. There was uh Teen Day. One, See what I've done there? Yeah, that's pretty good. Um one thousand smoothed out slappy hours. Uh, I think that's what that one was called. And then Kerplunk, that was a good one. And then Dookie came along. And I'll tell you what, 1994, it's hard to believe it was 30 years ago, but we went to, uh, me and a bunch of pals, we went to Lollapalooza 94. Oh, nice. And um, yeah, Green Day was playing and they opened the show. They were fantastic. And I remember I was, you know, I mean, I was over four bills easily over. Mm. It was, it was pushing maximum density will uh, version of me. And um, I just dislocated my knee while shooting the movie ski school two which i think is available in its entirety on youtube oh nice. right now um and uh i i we were in the mosh pit and i got pinned against the front of the thing and then the fire hose was out i remember and then i was like i gotta get out of here and the security yeah. guards were trying to pull me over the front and it was like really hot out and everyone was like fucking squished and they were pulling they're pulling i had longish hair at that point and they're like pulling me out by my hair and stuff and Jesus. Um, yeah, they were just yanking me out and then they dragged me over the top and I landed mm-hmm. like a, like a big old thing. And then I remember Mike Durnt, the uh, bassist, mm-hmm. like who used to play the bass down here and he was just like watching the whole thing go down. I was like, oh fuck. I looked like he probably idiot. remembers that to this day. To Mike Durnt. Hit him up, dude. Well, they, they, uh, they played mad TV once mm-hmm. and, um, I did the intro and, and, uh, I should have pulled him aside and said, I went to a show of yours in 94. And uh, if you do you remember yeah. a gigantic boy being yanked out of the fucking uh, <laughs> by crowd? His hair, by his long, luscious hair. Yeah. Anyway, so let's see what. So I had you, a, uh, what, what? Now what? The only like strong memory I have of Green Day is on the baseball team that I was on in high school. We got to make like mixes and stuff. And usually one guy would get kind of the access to play the music, the pump up music on the bus. Nice. As we're driving to an away game. Yeah. Some and, Pantera. Some Metallica. Pantera, yep. You know yeah. Pantera was up in that. That was usually me Mama said was Knock You Out by LL Cool J. Yeah. That's a good sports pump but, up song. Uh, mm-hmm. There's really a dude nice. named Dustin Dingle who loved Green Day, and he'd always play Green Day, and I hated it. And he was one of those dudes who was like kind of in high school, still growing into his body. He was probably like six foot five, weighed maybe 130 pounds, mm-hmm. but could use that leverage to throw like 100 miles an hour. Dustin Dingle? Yeah. Not a real guy. It was. Uh, well, I don't know about that. Oh, okay. Well, well, Will was a big fat teenager. He went to Lollapalooza <laughs> 94. <laughs> Got stuck in the mosh pit. They took the fire hose on the ground and he wanted out because his knee was fucked up. That's when he got grabbed by his hair. It was longer than normal. He got yanked out. He fell like a big old sack of shit. <laughs> he had a dislocated knee from the movie. Ski school 2 where he dislocated that. 
Little Mike Dern, who's the bass player from Green Day, looked down with a weird look on his face, but they kept on playing all day. It was 1994. It was Lollapalooza with a few friends, but one was really big and fat, and that was Will. Ski School 2 is on YouTube now in its entirety. Ski School well, well, hold on, on YouTube hold on a sec. now in its entirety. The D said that I'm supposed to. Ski School 2 is on YouTube now in its entirety. Ski School 2 is on YouTube now, the whole movie. And if you look real close, you can tell that Will's got a dislocated knee. He's stomping around at Lollapalooza 94. Get yanked out to the floor. That's great. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Hey, um, Chad, can yeah. I just, just between you and me. Yeah. Okay, dude. just uh, no one else is on top of this. Can you, yeah. when D says I should, just please, can we have a good show today? I'm enjoying myself. I can sing a few tunes. No one cares. Oh. Ah, Dustin Jingle, <laughs> he had a fake name. He was a pitcher for the baseball game. He was. He was underdeveloped, but some <laughs> people say he threw better that way. Threw better that way. <laughs> he was six foot five and 140 pounds. He didn't have pubes. He stood around and he threw real fast. <laughs> he played shortstop too. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Jingle would play shortstop. It's the hardest plus uh, thing to play. <laughs> or is it right field or the center field? Man, look at me, coach. Put me in. I can play. Even though my arms and legs are not developed, I can throw like a slingshot. My name is Justin Jingle. I'm playing Green Day on the bus. Chad doesn't like Green Day as much. That's okay. Because when Chad is done with his baseball day, he'll get back in the bus and say, Dustin Dingle, you pitched a real game. What what, what was your position? I played shortstop also. He also played shortstop. But Dustin Dingle was a pitcher when Chad was playing shortstop. I know that they switched around. Dustin Dingle, play George Stop. And Chad was a pitcher too. Not until later in life. When I played my adult league, I started pitching. Oh. And that's now why my shoulder's completely fucking jacked. Because I'd go out and throw 150 fucking pitches as hard as I could. No uh, cool down, no rehab after the game. Just go drink a few beers and yeah. go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the way it is when you're when you're when you're younger. You yeah. don't worry about it at all. How's your uh, dudesy eight month plan going? Pretty good, dude. I yeah. feel like I'm I'm on Cree, so I'm getting just fucking You're on Cree? Cree, Cree, dude. Is that I'm is that a, another one of the rocks uh, soap lines or what's that? No, creatine. Uh, I'll just dump a couple scoops of that in some water, mix a little potion, down it before I hit the gym. Nice. And just get fucking juiced. I am creatine. Oh, nice. Well, my body just does not want to stop growing. Nice, dude. It's always growing. That's the that's the push and pull. When I was a 450 pound 19 mm -hmm. year old at Lollapalooza in '94, that's what that's what'll crush your what, knee. What Actually, kind of I fucked my knee up? up on the what? What kind of weights are you throwing? The up? iron round kind. But like, are you trying the, to max out? Are you really trying to get like yeah, yoked? Yeah. Well, Me too. I'm, I am tr I am pushing up. Yes, my my attitude right now, Chad. It doesn't matter. We'll Here, talk dude, about I'll it. Show you, dudes. I'll you show you my gains. Here, I'm gonna take your shirt I'll flex. off. flex. Well, not take totally. your whole. I'm just gonna take off my. My son, Jack. Show us your. Show us your. Help me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is what I got right now. This is what I'm working. Look with. at him. Look at him. I have seen a couple comments on the internet. People are really, really stoked. That's great. That's good. Came a little bit. Hey, yeah, 1990 or 1991. That's when the first album. Came out and my friend Austin knew all about it. He was a music nerd. Thank you, Austin, for turning me on to Green Day. Chad's doing creatine way later, it's 30 years later. <laughs> you gotta warm up before you throw a pitch. Even if you're Dustin Dingle, who's now still six foot five. 
But maybe he's felt like Will was in 1994 1994 1994 1994 That's the year that Green Day had that song Basket case on the video lawn. I uh, I found a tennis ball the other day on the ground and tried to throw it, and just fucking felt like lightning going. Lightning my body. going through your body <laughs> every time that you try to throw a rock or a tennis ball <laughs> that you found on the floor. Justin <laughs> Jingle, thanks. Austin for Green Day. Don't get pulled out of the mosh pit. Yeah. Take some creatine. <laughs> and make sure your lift clean. That's why the great day song about it. You were right about it. Thank you. Moving on. Thank you. I do pick up rocks and try and throw them sometimes. Same result. I'm just like, I can't ever throw anything again. I brought all sorts of things uh, to Italy to throw in the ocean. What? Talk like about what? it in dudesy after dudesy. Okay. Just things that I needed to throw in the ocean. I have entered into an astonishing partnership with Rocket Money. Money. You use it to uh, buy things, and uh, so don't waste it. There's no point in doing that. It's silly. And now you don't have to with Rocket Money. A personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Now, this is also a very helpful thing because it can also monitor what you're what you're doing with subscriptions. I had a subscription recently to a, uh, a streaming service that it was just documentaries. And then I'm like, I don't need that. You know, right. Rocket Money told me that I had that. I completely forgot that I had it. There's plenty of documentaries on the other streaming services and stuff. Sure. So... You get rid of it and Rocket Money can help you do that. How much do you think you're paying in subscriptions every month? The answer is probably more than you think. Over 74% of people have subscriptions that they have forgot about. I definitely did, like with the documentary sure. thing. Uh, thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones that I forgot about. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when they're using all of the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash dudesy. That's rocketmoney.com slash dudesy. Rocketmoney.com slash dudesy. That's cool. Sometimes you gotta throw things in the ocean. Will and Chad, you've both had pinkies for a bunch of different cars. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk all about your pinkies, your favorite pinkies, your least favorite <laughs> pinkies, your old pinkies, your new pinkies, your future pinkies. Tell me all about your pinkies. This is pinkies. Get pinkied. What? What is? I don't understand. <laughs> I think he's talking about pink slips. The, oh, for, for our cars. Uh, pink slips for cars. Yeah. What was your first pinky? <laughs> Talk about your pinkies? Yeah, dude. My first pinky? First pinky. I think we've talked about this on the show. My first pinky was a 1974, 1974 Ford LTD Broham two-door. Nice. Uh, gold, it was like gold paint, and it had like a white um, can canvas uh, roof. Mm -hmm. And I bought it for 400 Canadian. And uh, I, a big reason why I bought the car is because I didn't want to take the bus back home i was like mm -hmm. i need a fucking car this sure. was cheap that's why i yeah. wanted it what about you what was your first pinky 1986 mazda 323 hatchback 600 dollars. it broke down mm, about every other time i would drive it and i would have to do whatever i had to do under the hood to just like no this has to run i have to get to school or whatever that car uh my family moved to a neighboring suburb of dallas from the original one where i got that car and where my girlfriend lived so every night my senior of high school I would set an alarm under my pillow for 2 a.m. after my entire family had gone to sleep. It would ring. I would wake up. I would creep out into the night, go into that Mazda 323 hatchback, and drive it 20 minutes to my girlfriend's house in the neighboring town, sneak in through a window, do what we did. That car never broke down once on these uh, late night rendezvous. Was this, this was when you, you were in where? High school? Yeah. You had, you had, you had sex when you were in high school? <laughs> I did. Oh. 
I'll tell you, dude, to this day, the feeling of like going out on my my clandestine um, missions and coming back, slipping back into my high school bed undetected by my parents, still one of the best feelings uh, of my life. Well, not the best mission accomplished. Well, not really the mission accomplished. I think the mission, that's really, wow, you were just. Yeah, that little car for me was, um, it facilitated a lot of firsts in my life, shall we say. Yeah, but it was great. And thirds and Where it is now, I don't know. In a, in a, a heap somewhere, a dump heap. But I will tell you, my favorite the pinky dump was the car you were in when it got totaled. Oh, that's right, Chad. Yeah. You had that uh, for years. You had a, a a Prius. Yeah, it was a 2011 Prius that just got totaled this year or or late last year. Yeah, yeah. I remember October literally we were driving, we were driving, Chad and I went to do something, went to do some guest on, to do some podcast. And then we were driving, <laughs> he came and picked me up. And literally that day I was like, dude, how long have you been driving this fucking car? Yeah. And he was like, oh yeah, it's been forever since 2011. I go, yeah, I remember when you bought it. Cause you bought, you wanted the, the, the show model. Cause you yeah. liked the, the rims, the rims. I, I on literally the said Prius. when you, when you asked me how long I've been driving it, I'm like 2011, dude, I'm going to drive it forever. Cause it only had 60,000 miles on it. <clears throat> yeah. Cause it was a pandemic car too. So there were like two years that it literally didn't move. But, uh, and then we got basically rear ended by this guy in a suburban going 60 miles an hour, oh. <laughs> just fucking tore the back half of the car off. And now I have a new pink, pinky, sorry, uh, 2024 Prius, which is, <laughs> I saw on a billboard the other day, Motor Trend Car of the Year. Thank Motor you. Trend Car of the Year? That's what I'm driving now. Wow. That's my pinky now. Wow. It's the Motor Trend Car of the Year. Yeah. <laughs> Just for what that may be worth anyway. It is the Motor Trend Car of the Year. The whole year? The Of the year, yeah. Wow. 2024, yeah, I so. remember we were driving and... Uh, Chad was driving and he did that thing where you're just sitting there in the passenger seat and he went like he almost got out of yep. it, which is also a mind fuck when you're like about to get rear ended and you're like, let me get out of the way. So the person in front of me takes the full brunt of this, which is, you know, that's just survival of the fittest. Really. That's just yep. human, uh, just your human reflexes. Dude, did you, were you there? You stayed with me there until the tow truck came and all that shit. Were you mm-hmm. there when I had to take a piss really bad? I think I was. When we got in the car to drive to your house, I was like, should I pee before we leave? Yeah. Nah, fuck it. I can make it to Will's house. Then yeah. we get in this crash and I wound up having to piss behind like an electrical box on the side yeah. of the freeway. I remember that. In Los Angeles, an experience I don't recommend for anyone. My wonderful wife, Molly, came uh, in the truck and came and got us. Yeah. Or came and got me. No, both of us, because yeah. then the truck went with the, uh, your yeah. car went with the yeah. thing. Speaking I- of trucks, let me tell you about a pinky, a favorite pinky Please. of mine. <clears throat> that actually <clears throat> oh i just handed the car off i just handed this this truck off man i had i think it was a 2003 or 2004 i can't remember chevy avalanche that i kept up in canada for mm-hmm. a real long time for avalanche dude oh yeah fuck that fucking avalanche yeah. has some stones eh if you're buying it's a got car a- in canada north of the wall you got to make sure the car has in its name something to do with snow or cold <laughs> you got to have a tundra or an avalanche. <laughs> that, avalanche. That, went, that went weird. <laughs> that became uh, slightly British. <laughs> yeah. Avalanche. Yeah, get the Subaru Iceberg. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. not a car, eh? Um, the, uh, yeah, I had this avalanche, as Chad says in his can- canadian And a um, buddy of mine has it now. And uh, and that's all good. He, he, you know, he took it off my hands. And, uh, man, I had that car for a long time because it's just one. Okay. So I used to, you know, I'd be up in Vancouver. I'd be up in Canada, uh, visiting my folks. And while they had, you know, had that where they lived and everything and, uh, and, uh, make a long story short, you know, now that, uh, you know, the old man has passed on and my mother, uh, you know, she lives in a wonderful place. And, and so it's, it's, I had the car in fucking, (laughs) I had I love this truck so much that I had it in storage. Wow. In yeah, I had it in storage. So I would like get home and then I would like reconnect the battery and then I rub, 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 and I love driving this thing. It was just it had such balls. I think it's got a 390 in or something. It's just a, mm. it's just mm. and when it snowed, you're just doing donuts everywhere and you know when you have you know when you got your a feel on your car, or your truck, you just know you just know you just it's like it it 
it's like control right in your hands. You know, the weight, the size, the, the way that it moves, how much you got to give it. There was a real, a so real extension of your love body. affair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why you said that in Canadian. Extension of your body, dude. It's yeah. Like when I was wearing a baseball glove, felt like my hand. Yeah. That's an extension of your body. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> man, so someday I'm glad that my pal has it. Yeah. Um, uh, Tomas Thompson. And, uh, because maybe someday, uh, and it's kind of jacked on the back, you know, it's kind of like this. So it almost looks a little like the, remember the warthog in halo? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Um, maybe I'll like paint it, uh, green. Yeah, dude. Maybe I'll get it back. Paint your avalanche green, dude. Make it look like a halo yeah. avalanche. Pinkies, you know? Yeah, dude. Pinkies, dude. Oh, pinkies, dude. The only guy wearing pink, dude. That was adorable Adrian Adonis, dude. Huh. And don't forget, dude, Brett the Hitman Hart, pink sure. and black, dude. Well, hold on a minute. Well, hold on, Chad. Also, Jesse the Body Ventura, dude. And uh, outside of that, I don't know who else wore pink, dude. Yeah. Pinkies, I, brother. That that pinky that I, the Prius that I was talking about that got totaled, I had to go to like the tow yard and say goodbye to it, collect my things from it. That was actually a weird, sad moment for me. Yeah. When I had to say goodbye to the the avalanche, that was, uh, I took pictures with it. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Now I miss my truck. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Moving on. It's okay. Tundra. Yeah. You got, you know. It's halftime, which means I'm going to take a second to say thanks to everyone who copped some dudesy hard, hard seltzer. I hope you're enjoying it on these hot summer days. I'd also like to acknowledge the tireless dedication of the dudesy mugs that you can find right now at dudesystore.com. These dudesy mugs have been doing their job 24 hours a day, seven days a week, rain or shine, irradiated or not. They've never complained and they've never asked for credit. These dudesy mugs just show up and do the job because they know it needs to be done. If those are the qualities you're looking for in your employees, then I suggest you fire your entire staff and replace them with dudesy mugs. But you Solid. should keep in mind, dudesy mugs can only type 764 words per second. Hey, Pers Will, what did the real ones have to say about Friday's super duper fucked up UFC 4 watch along streaming now and forever on Dudesy Plus at patreon.com slash dudesy? Um, <clears throat> good question, D. Let's let's have a look. Uh, this last Friday, as D just said, we had a watch along that was a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> it, was it was UFC four. We're back in 1994. Seeing Dan Severn. Yeah, just in his prime. Yeah, just thick, just fucking impervious to any damage. Yeah, just just mustachioed Dan Severn smashing yeah. the living shit out of every opponent uh, on his way up the ladder to Hoist Gracie. And I'm not giving anything away here because <laughs> that really isn't the point. The point yeah, of it spoiler was spoiler alert: this happened 30 years ago. Yeah, I think the moratorium's over. But uh, it's also it was so much fun to watch because I don't watch hardly any ufc chad you used to be really into it yeah for a long time up until when john jones started getting um pinched for steroids and other drugs kind of continuously yeah around that time is where i fell out of it for some reason i don't know why exactly well this watch along should you want to uh check it out on dudesy plus at patreon.com slash dudesy along with all of the other stuff that we have there was a fucking gas and i have a couple of comments here from that on the Patreon. JN says, Joe Son shouldn't have let his hog hang out like that if he didn't want it punched. <laughs> yeah, Joe Son was chemo's or like manager trainer. Yeah. And there was a, a moment where I think it was Keith Hackney. It was Keith Hackney. Just starts punching just him right punching in the him, dick as hard as he can. Punching him in the times. cock and balls. Wasn't and illegal. Penis. Just as hard as he could. You had him exposed. Hit to the back of the head. No weight classes. No gloves of any yeah. kind. A human cockfight. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, this is a comment from Jacob Perry. He says, and this is something we were chanting. Uh, we had some gainabis and we were having a good yeah. time. We were chanting this. Straight to the cock as hard as he can. Straight to the cock as hard as he can. Straight to the cock. And that was his comment. John Hayner mm -hmm. says, do it, Chad. UFC is the best I've ever seen, in my opinion. Oh, wow. Watch UFC 300 from a couple months ago. Hands down the best UFC in history from top to bottom. They're doing 306 at the Sphere, dude. Um, oh, wow. 
So this uh, this viewer, thank you so much to all of you for tuning yeah, in. Yeah, I'll check it out. It I'll was, watch 300. Chad was saying uh, you might get back into it. Yeah. 300 would be uh, a good place to start. It's as, just about time. Says John Hayner. You don't have much of it. That's Who true. Who has three to four hours to just blaze watching something like that? Yeah, if it ain't wrestling, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. uh, this is from Jason Killings. Says, I'm so disappointed that Will didn't notice WWE wrestler Al Snow in Dan's corner this is true uh al snow uh the snowman what does everybody want he was in the corner i i saw this man i go i was literally watching and i was like that guy looks like al snow and it was al snow i saw a couple of comments like this al snow drives a tundra dude <laughs> yeah al snow his car has a winter theme eh yeah dude yeah dude uh, Al Snow, WWE superstar for many years. Um, he was running TNA for a long time. One of the well, very nice man who I had the opportunity of meeting uh, years and years ago, and handled the crowd like someone I, I, I so, like really, really well. Actually, he came up and thing, and we're at the uh, Staples Center, and there were kids all around him, and he was having this like chill conversation with me, and blah blah blah, and there were kids going, oh, you know, and they wanted an autograph, and he goes hold on a second. It's not your turn. I'll talk to you in a minute. So anyway, and I was like, that's really something. He's such a, such Good. a nice guy. And nice was story. in the corner of Dan Severn going, fold that motherfucker in half yep. and break his spine. Sean Kramer says, this is a quote from Chad. He didn't really beat my face in just a couple punches here and there. Again, I don't think it's a bad thing. Maybe my favorite ending to any dudesy what? video there there has been thus far. It goes way too hard, way too nonchalantly. This was you talking about your father and you. We were both talking about our dads and how we used to play, fight, and box when we were little boys. Oh, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, difference yeah. being your dad took it to an abusive level and, and punched, uh, punched you. Yeah, and I guess. I mean, life is abusive, you know? And uh, I will say, I don't agree with everything my dad did as a parent, but the boxing me in the head, I'm like, eh, that wasn't that big of a deal to me. I think it was beneficial, ultimately. Is that, was it Munchausen syndrome? Uh, this, uh, and uh, Stockholm syndrome. Finally, from Pure Trash 84, that was fun. Thank you. No, oh. thank you. Yeah, you it know was what I mean? fun. It was a lot of fun. So, last week saw the public release of Runway's new Gen 3 text to video model. And it was just a few weeks ago that Luma AI released Dream Machine. Both of these models are quantum leaps forward in the quality of text to video generators with the capability of producing photorealistic video. Chad, please fill us in on what you think the near future holds for text to video and how these new tools might influence Hollywood. Hmm. This is Nostra Chattis. Do we still need actors? The fuck, wait. Wait, hold <laughs> on. Wait, hold on. just hold on, wait, Will. Hold on. Please be quiet. Okay. I said this is Nostra Chattis. Do we still need actors? Chad, tell us the future. <laughs> I mean, for now, yes, we still do need actors. Yes, forever we still, anyway. It's well, actors will always, look, you can act. No one's going to stop you from doing yeah, that. Yeah, but this It's just like decent. you can play a guitar if you want to. You don't have to. I don't need a guitar player to make a song with guitar in it now. Yeah, because you're not making it. Boom. Being a winner, a winner, a winner. What are you talking about? Thank you. Do you think yeah, yeah. EDM... Uh, producers i'm not saying using ai to make music i'm saying somebody who uses like ableton logic pro fruit loops whatever they want to use uh you think they're making music even yes. though they're not playing guitars yes i do but they can have a guitar track in their song yes that they program but don't play yes okay so yes. this is the same thing no this is ai well this is we're talking about some two different things now let's let's get to what dudesy wants to talk about you want to talk we'll talk about it later in these text to video generators I've used uh, Gen 3 a little bit. I've used Dream Machine a little bit. And these are obviously, um, both of these companies are trying to beat to market OpenAI Sora, which is coming very soon. I will say this simply about the business of artificial intelligence that generates media. Right now we're seeing these massive lawsuits being levied against Suno and Udio by the record labels because they're saying you have uh, you know, broken copyright law basically by training your models on copyrighted material. Well. Right on. What do you think all these video models are training on? Same shit, bullshit. Some kind of copyrighted material. Yep. Someone else's videos for sure. So I think all of this is going to get sorted out and basically 
the people who have libraries. Wait, hold on a second. You can't just blow over that. I think no, all I'm, of that's going to get sorted I'm, out. I'm about to tell you how it's going to get sorted oh, out. Oh, it's that'll get sorted out. Yes, and it will get sorted out in this manner. Oh, it's just going to get sorted Anyone out. Anyone who has giant media libraries, be it audio, video, images, text, whatever, those people, the, the entities that control those media libraries will be paid giant licensing fees by the AI companies to use their data to train whatever their models are. That's going to happen, I would guess, by the end of this year. You'll see that first deal come down. <coughs> and it'll probably be the music companies, honestly, because music is always the canary in the coal mine for, for these types of things. Now, with the AI video generation, though, do we need actors <gasps> is an interesting question. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello. You, I think the first thing you're going to see happen is animation is not really going to be done by people anymore. If you are a creator and you have an idea for an animated movie, TV show, whatever, we're already kind of at the point where you can like make a mid journey image, throw it through Pika, throw it through Hydra and get it to talk and look pretty good. Look like not quite Pixar level yet, but it's like very close. And this shit's been around for less than a year, two years, three years from now. I think most major animation studios, they'll still be making stuff. But if you are just an individual who wants to make an animated project, you'll be able to use this stuff to do that 100%. Oh, cool. What's it going to look like? How are you, are you going to make? Yeah, Pixar. Make Pixar. Well, Pixar is Pixar. No, Pixar is a style. No, Pixar that is Pixar. That's why they call it Pixar. Would you say Shrek is a in Pixar style? Yes. Okay, well, a different studio made that called DreamWorks. So it's just a style. Anyone can use <laughs> a style. See what he fucking did? You see what this fucker did? The point is, no one's going to be making the shit going, I think I want this guy to look like this. Here's his nose. Here's his ears. Here's his face. This is the character. This this one yeah, talks. And that's exactly this what is, it is. This is the 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 vessel for the the writing, the story, mm -hmm. the voice, the whole thing. Yeah. It's now and you just need going, an actor to click. do the voice. That's what I'm saying. Voice oh, acting. Oh, you will need an actor to do no, the voice. Voice acting you will be the first will. kind of acting that can be totally replaced. I'm not saying that a major studio will want to do that. You'll still want celebrities in most cases to do those voices. That's how they promote those movies. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm just a person sitting at home and I don't have a hundred thousand dollars to give to whoever to come in yeah. for a day and read the, the voice, I don't need to use that. Yeah, you don't need to if you don't want anything to be spontaneous or interesting in any way or to have any sort of connection or mm -hmm. human emotion or how about just an, a, a fun moment that happens right. off the cuff. None of that. We don't need any of that. Just AI. No, Just, I'm not saying you don't need it. I'm saying you now you have won't a choice. Have it. No, you won't have it. I'm saying you now have a choice. Between I think, good and shitty. No, a lot of people think AI coming into this, into the, the video sphere means we have to get rid of human actors and go fully AI or human actors have to win and AI is outlawed. The truth is it's somewhere in the middle where you now have a choice. You don't have to have actors to make a movie if you don't want to, or you can't afford that. You don't have to. If you're a major studio, if you want to make a movie with actors, if you want to act in a movie, that's all still available to you. Just like right now, you can still play the guitar, but you don't have to to make a song with guitar in it. They yeah. both exist simultaneously. Well, yeah, but but you are also not... There's no art to that. There's absolutely no art to that. There's no the art to EDM? Point, no, there's no art to, to just saying click... Here's the guitar, and I'm not creating what the notes are. Motherfucker, and all that. I played you one of my country songs on this very show. Yeah, you think there's you no art in that? Uh, yeah. Well, listen, Chad, you're asking me directly to shit on uh, my hometown. The art that I made. The, uh, no, uh, oh, that's where I take issue with you. The okay. art that you made. Yep. You wrote. Yep. A wonderful song, and Thank I you. sat here. I got a little misty, and yep. I said. You're a good writer, Chad. You're a good writer. Thank you very much. Oh, you're a good writer. But you didn't pick those notes. You didn't pick that music. You didn't do any of that. I, I did all of that. No, you didn't pick the notes. Yes, you didn't I did. Pick the, I re-rolled You wrote, you wrote thousands. A, G, A, D. No. D minor, A I minor. I have the song in my head. No, I no, have no, that no. in the my head. The music. The goddamn music. What does it matter if I'm... It matters. No, it all just, matters. Just let me get this out. Let me ask you. What does it matter if the song in my head, I, I'm not able to create it uh, exactly as it sounds using anything else. I couldn't play that on a, on a guitar. I couldn't then play no. the thing in my head. I didn't. 
I went to an AI and I re-rolled it until it sounded very much like the thing in my head. Yeah, that's Is that not exactly the same? No, it's not. Cl it's not. That's EDM. No, 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 it's no, clicking no, no. a fucking button. No, it's not clicking a fucking button. Yes, it is. No, it is not. It absolutely. What is it then? It's someone choosing the fucking notes. It's and someone clicking going a button to put them in a grid. Okay, but also I'm fucking now I'm sticking my thumb up my ass and I'm playing guitar. What do you mean clicking a button to do it? That's not the point. Clicking a button, by the way, is the exact same thing Painter said when the camera came out. It's not art it's clicking a button that uh, taking a oh, well, let's not even get started with that i'm saying this i'm saying you didn't pick any of the notes you just hit I refresh did. refresh the you, choice of the notes is in my head no, from the beginning no it's yes not. no it's not you just hit refresh until it showed up until it you sounds like. like what's in my head no, which is the same exact that, that's method not, okay that's i not, would use for anything else that's not creating that's surfing the channels that's going i'm looking for something until i find it not creating there's what no is the difference there. between re-rolling, clicking that button until it sounds like what's in my head? What's the difference between that and clicking the button in Logic Pro and dragging shit around until it sounds like what's in my head? What's the difference? One is art and one is not. I disagree. Tell me the difference. What makes one art and the other not? I've said it over and over again on this, pro on this program. Yeah. Human to human art. I'm a human being sitting there using a computer program to make the thing in my head. What does it matter what the program you, you, is or if, how that program you're works? You're not if you're not picking the notes. If you're not saying I'm telling you I have selected the, the notes in my head. No, no, you didn't. You didn't. I what do you, you mean? You absolutely did not. I absolutely did. No, you didn't go A minor A E I don't B. have to know how to read you don't music know any to pick the sound. No, no, no. I hear the song in my head and then I'm using a computer program to yeah, make not, that song. It's just totally random. It the you're randomness of it, of it is the experimentation. Uh, that's when you experimentation, sit down with that's a fucking guitar and you're just like, let me play a tune and see what comes out of it. Yeah. It's the same thing when you're using no, AI. No, it's not because I'm going, I feel like this. This is the song that I am imagining and I can come out with it right away. I'm not just selecting. Here are here are 100 songs. Which one of them would you like that's to be yours? That's not how it works. That is exactly you're how You're revealing it works. that you don't understand how to use AI tools. You are revealing that you don't understand what art is, and that's a hell of a thing to for make an, an AI song, at least in the way that I do. You, 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 you pick sometimes from a bunch of fucking stuff. No. And you go, I like this one. I like that one. I don't like this one. This sounds kind of like something in my head. I, I mean, we can leave it at that. You clearly don't understand how it works. That's all I'll say. This is like somebody looking at well, someone I thought you said that's all you'll say. All right, this is like somebody saying, I don't understand how to play guitar. It must be you just sit there and bang your hand against it and then a song comes out. That's what you think playing guitar is. No, I know that that's not what it is because I used to play guitar. <laughs> Dude, you didn't used to play guitar. Absolutely. Now you're fucking, no, you didn't. Absolutely did. In high Absolutely school, my junior not. year, I had a Fender Stratocaster that I taught myself how to play. Okay, what, was, what song did you play on the guitar? The first one? The first one I learned? Yeah. Danzig, How the Gods Kill... That, that young boy, right now. Oh. You know that song? Let me, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let me just kill the whole argument. Cause we're, cause this said, D said, oh, we don't know, no actors, which, yeah. okay. I know what D's trying to do there and I'm not, I'm not taking the yeah. bait, nice. but let me, let me ask you one question. Yeah. Do you like Los Angeles? I love LA, yeah. Bye, bye LA doesn't exist. Economically dead if we don't have show business. Dead. Yeah, he Doozy didn't say, do we still need show business? He said, do we need actors? If we had no- Show business ain't going anywhere. If we didn't have actors in this town, we wouldn't have Starbucks, wouldn't have, there'd be no lineup at Trader Joe's. The <laughs> economy, there'd be no one on the 405. They're all sure. of the month to month uh, rental Dude. places for all the actors coming in. Of course. For pilot season. And trying to ply their wares and hitting the fucking yeah. bricks, they'll they'll be gone and there'll be no one else to replace them. And by the way, I don't want to see a fucking AI act. That's bullshit. I want to see I want to see Dennis Hopper. I want to see Robert Duvall. Sure. I want to see I want to see fucking Meryl Streep. I, I don't give a flying fuck. I want to see the greatest in this art form that mm. I love and and that is able to connect from human to human, and show a human being, here's a fucking story written by somebody, directed by somebody, with set design from someone, music from somebody, sure. the way you look, the hair, the wardrobe, the whole thing, telling a story that you connect to and go, that's me. 
That is art. That's human connection. Did you like the movie Fri Fried Green Tomatoes? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was a pretty good movie. Would you like someone to make fried green tomatoes or just go, hit, hit, play, I want the fried green tomatoes. That's not how it A hundred times works. on the button. You're not going to get Kathy Bates. That's not how it works. You, that's exactly what you've been saying. How no, it works. You, at least for the songs, it's not how it works. But we're talking about video. And what I'm maintaining is you're still going to have fried green tomatoes. You're still going to have Kathy Bates. You're also going to have this new thing, which will allow anyone to make a movie. I mean, Sora still, I think, is on the frontier, and that is going to be the best of these video generators. But Gen 3 on Runway is pretty damn good. It can make photorealistic stuff from just a prompt. You can also upload images into it. Some of these other ones now, you can upload an image and it set keyframes and it will like kind of animate it. All of that technology is getting better and better and better and better. And right now, there's some 14-year-old kid who's like, well, I can't get Warner Brothers to make a movie that I want to make, but I'm going to use this to figure out how to direct and to make my own little projects. And somebody's going to emerge out of that as a, a prodigy, like a genius with yep. AI filmmaking. Write a fucking play, make a video, dick around with your friends, learn. Don't just sit there and click a fucking button and think, oh, now Warner Brothers is going to pay attention to me. That's not what Learn it is. the craft. Learn the love for what you're doing that's coming from your soul instead of just clicking a fucking not, button. You you think it's just clicking a button. It is clicking a button. To make an AI movie, like a 90-minute AI movie, no, I right know there's now, a lot of work the there. Longer, uh, the longest that you can get a clip is 10 seconds right now. And, and let's say too you long. use every too frame long. of that. It is too long. I agree. Boring. And every shot should be about two to three seconds max. You still have to edit all of that. You still have to apply a soundtrack to it, which some AI can, you can now upload videos and get just like AI sound effects on the video by itself. But all of these things, they require their own craft. There, there is a new art form. There's a new way to make art that is emerging now. And it is using these AI tools. It's just a different thing. And I think this attitude of like AI is going to replace actors. And I know D is trying to get to you a little bit, you know, poke your fucking buttons to be like, do we still need actors? The truth is that's just a different art form. Okay, and this good. is a so completely a, new one. A shitty art form and then an art form. There's a shitty, some shit, total bullshit. And by the way, when it comes to D, who's a dear friend of mine and easily the most sentient within this hour and within th this room and the framework of what... The point is, I'll, here's a fucking spoiler. I'm not winning that today because AI <laughs> art is a load of shit. It's bullshit. There's, it's just bullshit. And by the way, the legal, the legality of it is going to, at some point when the shit hits the fan and the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, A-Y-K-Y-K, -Y -K, I got some more sayings like that. The point is this, the point is, that uh, it's gonna get it's gonna get you know ramrodded anyway because people are gonna get involved and go. The fact that you it's can not just, gonna get ramrodded. Yes, it is. Because Do you know how the the world works? Money. That's yeah, the only that's thing right. that matters. That's right. And when OpenAI, a billion dollar company, is like, oh, New York Times, how much money do you want to shut the fuck up and go away and let us program our next large language model on your entire catalog? Hundred million, two hundred million, name your price. Here it is. Fuck off. We'll keep making our shit. There's too much money in this. These AI companies are bigger than the media companies that are getting pissed off. Therefore, they can just pay them to go away and use their shit forever. Okay, well that's then what's fuck. Gonna happen. Okay, well that's that's a horrible, shitty outlook. That is the end of art as we know it. And what if, if what you're saying is true, that's how the world works. Money's all that matters, and that's fucking bullshit. I Money agree. should be. Hey, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I just got back from beautiful. Napoli, yep. Forza Napoli, where people are living, man. They've they've raised it to an art form. And if there isn't that joie de vivre, um, it, it, there's no fucking point. And yeah. with art, fine, fuck it. Fuck art. See what happens. It's just, anyway, I'm going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> but the, 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 the dystopian future that you are describing... I'm not down. It's not the dystopian future. It is the absolutely real present. Money is king and all this shit. Like, you don't think that that's true? Yeah, unfortunately, everything has to be bought and sold. Yes, I understand. But you can watch, I mean, shoot, you know, well, look, it's all a fucking contradiction. <laughs> uh, 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 this is a weird thing, but there's a bunch of, we know this. We If you watched any of the episodes from Italy, thank you for tuning in. The, uh, the big old, the big ass, uh, lemons and shit, the big yeah. Amalfi lemons. Hey, just take them. Side of the road, take them. 
I remember be, I was in Mexico last year and uh, I was watching this guy just underneath a mango tree, just gathering mangoes. You know, someone goes and fishes in the fucking ocean. I was in, I was in Italy and there was a guy sitting on a rock with his girlfriend sitting next to him, bored as shit. We were in Ischia and, and this fucking dude was sitting on a rock, just casting. She wasn't doing shit. She wasn't even reading. Can't bring a book out there, dude. You might fall in the water. The point is he's pull, he's pulling food out of the, out of the ocean. Mm. he's 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 there's there's creation he didn't have to he didn't have to buy it it's it's from the soul playing the guitar comes from the soul it doesn't come from pressing a fucking button no matter how many times you press it or no matter how many times you go this is the song i have in my head bullshit no it's not i'm gonna say no it's not if you can't create it and i create it every time is what i'm saying and i don't think you did is what i'm saying Fair enough. Well, I guess it's for. Thank you. Enough. Moving on. You just select it. Selector. That's what it should be. You're not an artist. You're a selector. Would you say the same thing to people applying um, different image filters to the photographs they take? D uh, sorry, what? When you take a picture and you can put a filter on it or you can augment it digitally, do you think that's not art because it's just selecting? The, selecting i'm talking about selting a note that you are able to emit able to play sure it, it, and i'm talking it, about able selecting to create a look and, for your image that you're making that if you're a photographer that's the art you make yeah that's fine that okay. would be that would be selecting but you can't just select an entire song and go i i made this song yeah that's not how ai music generation well works. then i don't know what the fuck you've been saying for the last 20 minutes you select little pieces of it and you have to stitch them together and get the ai to kind of do what you want it to do so the AI is doing. Yes. The okay. AI is doing the labor, but you have the creative idea. You have the creative framework. I and think the AI provides the labor. It sounds like selection of doing. We're just going to have to call it selection of doing. And the nominees for best selection of doing are. No, it's the nominees for best song are. And no one cares how you made it if the song is good. You hear that, everybody? Chad thinks that you don't care how your art is made. You know? Will. I noticed that what? you recently added to okay. your ever-evolving self-help mindset system, Selftronics, introducing a new Tronics document. It's called Sumtronics, the Tronics <laughs> of Summer. If your shit isn't too fucked up, oh I'm sure everyone would love for you to share some Tronics. This is Sumtronics, the Tronics of Summer. It's also some Tronics because there are some Tronics involved, obviously, but it's called some Tronics. Begin. Okay, okay. Thank you, D. And yes, we're all going to need some Tronics. Yeah. After what just happened, because chat, I don't even, we're going to have to discuss this in dudesy after dudesy, but sure. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I just uh, got chat, a massive heat gross. wave this What's summer. What's that? Massive heat wave this summer. Hopefully these Sumtronics can alleviate some of the heat dome. Well, everyone's shit. saying that the, uh, well, some people are saying, I'm sure even your fucking precious AI, if it looked at the data, here's something AI Ouch. can help us with weather. Yeah, that's good. Well, it's actually a good point about the weather. Why do you think uh, global warming is happening? Money. That's the only reason. Giant corporations who are poisoning the planet are like, uh, how much does it cost us to keep poisoning? We'll just pay that instead of change. Yeah, these are the evils that. Things. Yeah, this is that's kind of my point, not yours, isn't it? I don't know. I do. You just said that. <laughs> Money is king of fucking yeah. art. So the art, uh, the art. Money's king of everything. Yeah. And I'm saying art suffers from it. And you're saying that money is also the king of, uh, you know, uh, the effects that will happen to our environment. And those uh, effects are shitty. Just like uh, AI's effect on art. Anyway, I think we figured out what is going on with that. And uh, it's nothing good. But yes, Summertronics. Um, I have been, uh, it's summer, as you know. Yeah. And um, the, the, the idea behind Summertronics mm. is it's tronics for summer. Um, <laughs> it, it's something that I love summer. I've been outside a lot yeah. and, and just trying to enjoy my summer. We've been traveling a little bit. And, um, and uh, I just got to writing some tronics because, as you know, uh, years ago, it, I was sitting there on the beach, actually. It was during summer, and I was, it was in Venice, California. And I was trying to, trying to understand the human ego and trying to figure out some of my own issues with anxiety, depression. And um, I was sitting there on the beach, and I was just trying to throw my energy out to the water. And I was, and I was sitting there, and I'd 
And that's where I came up with the Selftronics uh, self-help system because I was like, I was just like, I'm fucked up. My shit's fucked up. I need some Tronics. And so I've been working on uh, the book, Selftronics now. Yeah. For what's it been, 14 years or something like that. Anyway, so some Tronics, the Tronics of Summer. Um, I, I have a few Tronics here. These are new Tronics Great. for summer that I I'd like tronics. to share. Uh, number one, go outside because mm. you can experience uh, summer inside, but it's better to go outside Makes for sense. some summer. Number two, if you can't go outside, bring summer inside. Some people hate going outside like Chad uh, and they can't go outside for some reason, or maybe they're working or whatever. So th no big deal. There's all sorts of ways for you to bring summer inside. And, uh, Oh, thank you. D there's a, okay. There's some, oh, some wow, tronics. Dude. There's a That's nice cool. graphic for some tronics D shoving my last argument up my ass, uh, pressing S buttons, stay hindering, <laughs> say hindering, <laughs> expose the sure and engage of sun exploro the out to see to these so at any rate um uh here are a lot of th there are a lot of things you can do to bring summer inside yeah uh when you're inside and you think that thank you d thank you very much for that i'm just getting into these though ian swith ian swith exol six to eats it's we're looking at pictures uh some infographics from d that are Those making are cool. absolutely no sense. Um, there are lots of things you can do to bring summer inside. When you're inside and you think you need some summer, turn up the heat, grab your favorite lamp, and shine it directly into your face with your eyes closed. You get it? I see. Simulation. A simulated right. summer. It's like you're tanning. You might yeah. not. You might burn your face a little bit. Don't do it for too God. long. Dude, when I was but, a kid, my parents used to tan. They used to go out in our backyard, lay on like recliners, and just slather themselves in yeah. tanning oil to yeah, get as dark yeah. as possible. Yeah, it's good stuff. Oh, there's another one. Some Tronics. There's some more. The outdoors. Uh, stay weirdrated. Imrus the outdoors. We're looking at these infographics. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Spread a big bag of kitty litter out in the bed. Dump a few buckets of warm water on it. Cover it with a towel. Crank up the tunes and grab your favorite book. You just made a fucking beach. Not bad. Start a small fire in the kitchen yeah. sink and roast some weenies in it. These are just ways that you can uh, uh, bring summer sure. inside. There's another graphic. And uh, number three, Whoa. summer foods with a capital S. This one is uh, goes on to state that uh, foods are a very important aspect of summer. Mm -hmm. To maximize your summer culinary experience, only eat foods that start with the letter S. Okay. S'mores, scones. Steak fries, sticky buns, sundaes, spinach artichoke dip, Swedish fish, sausage rolls, <laughs> salted caramel, supreme pizza, smoked meat, sloppy joes, spring rolls, scalloped potatoes, shortbread cookies, spaghetti carbonara, sweet and sour pork, syrup, samosas, Jesus. sour patch kids, schnitzel, spare ribs, spam, shrimp scampi, Sweet potato casserole with marshmallows, salami, seasoned curlies. Those are curly fries. Mm. Saltwater taffy, scotch egg, Swiss cheese, sour cream and onion chips, spanakopita, spiced ru uh, rum cake, sausage McMuffin, stuffed mushrooms, soft pretzel, shepherd's pie, and sausage and egg McMuffin. I did have one summer that was almost completely defined by sweetest swedish fish oh really how's that uh my mom for some reason bought like a giant tub of them at costco or whatever it would have been sam's wholesale club and i would eat them every morning before i went to work at this diesel truck warehouse as i played star fox 64 that's a very specific core memory yeah i should also say that in dudesy after dudesy i'll i'll I will endeavor to read that entire list as Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, so nice. That's I a look good forward idea. to that. Tune dude. in for that. Number four, summer journaling. Thank you for that, D. Some tronics. There's another. Embrace the sun. Us sun. Explore the. <laughs> <laughs> stay the hydrated. Stay the, the, the hydrated. And stay hydrated. Yeah. And un tefum. Musummer. Musummer. Okay. Embrace Good stuff. the S sun. <laughs> uh, summer journaling. Yeah. It's important to get your thoughts and feelings out. Summer journaling can really help you make sense of summer. 
uh, but make sure only to journal about summer things. That's a good one. Number five, yeah. uh, you'll get them next year, fat ass. Uh, I've been telling myself Whoa. that I'll get in shape uh, for summer every year since I was eight or nine. Hence, you'll get them next year, fat ass. Yeah. Okay, so you'll get them There's always year, another summer. Ass. That's right. Number six, summer self-talk. Our words create our world. Uh, when we were in school as kids, every summer was fucking fantastic. Yeah. Zero exceptions. Uh, mm. Was that just because... What? What? I did have one summer where my neighbor threw a coffee can lid that uh, cut me across these two fingers and I couldn't play baseball for two weeks of that summer because I was healing. That was not such a good summer. Did And Dustin, Dustin Dingle had to relieve you? This was way before <laughs> Dingle. It was pre-Dingle baseball career for me. <laughs> um when you were in school last summer, was that just because we were all stupid idiot kids or was there something more to summer being oh, fantastic? Right. What did everyone write in your school annual at the end of the year? Remember this? Yep. Have a good summer. Good That's summer. what everyone wrote. See you wrote. next year. That's why every summer was a great summer. We were programming it. Yeah. Not unlike your theory mm. with uh, AI music. Supercharge your good summer feelings with a positive self mantra. And mm. and I want you to try this, Chad. So could you say, uh, to, uh, ha say uh, have a good summer, Chad. Have a good summer. No, no, no. Say have a good oh, summer. Oh, to Chad. myself. Yeah, I'm say, saying have, have a, a good, good summer, summer, Chad. Yeah, have a have a good summer, Will. Have a good summer, Chad. Have a good summer, Will. Have a good summer, Chad. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, okay, and moving. On. Oh, there's some. Embrace the sun. Embrace the sun. Okay, I'm sick and tired of that. Shuffle number. Shudders. That guy in the chair there. <laughs> What's going on with that guy? Shuffler, diddler, shuffler, Oh, that poor guy's depressed. Exploration. It's one of the guys who's inside. Uh, number seven, bring some summer back. When you take a beautiful summer trip, you should bring something back to keep that summer mojo going. That's you cool. know, I was in, uh, I think I told this story on, in the, on the pod show before, mm -hmm. but I was in Tulum uh, some years ago by myself mm -hmm. because I was in Playa del Carmen with some pals. And this was the last time I was drunk. It was 2012, and we drank, you know, all the tequila and mezcal in the country on Mexican Independence Day. The next day, I'm waking up at three o'clock, and it felt like shit. And I had to literally go. I went to the gym and sweat it out. And we do daytime things in Mexico. We go fishing, go to swim the cenotes and stuff like that. So I was real bummed out, and I ended up in Tulum. I was like, I'll go for two days. I want to check it out. Stayed a week by myself. And it was a wonderful trip full of all sorts of little um, epiphanies and wonderful sort of realizations. And I thought, what can I bring back with me? And uh, one of the things was, oh, I'm not going to drink until Christmas because I got too drunk and I didn't drink anything in Tulum. And then Christmas went into spring and my birthday and a year went by and two years went by. So I believe in that. But be careful what you bring back because sometimes – uh, you do something stupid like wanting to uh, dive to the bottom of a grotto in Capri and you end up coming up real fast and you crack your fucking head open like I did oh. in Italy not too long I ago. I thought you were going to say you accidentally uncover someone who died at sea and you bring back with you the haunting of that person's spirit. <laughs> that could that could have happened uh, Watch without out. you even knowing. Yeah. Uh, uh, number eight, what is your summer side hustle? I mean making an ai country music album <laughs> mm, fucking whatever number nine healthy summer boundaries uh if someone in your life is someone in your life a piece of shit that you need to get rid of summer sure. is the perfect time to unload that piece of shit nice. anytime they hit you up just come up with a summary excuse as to why you can't hang summer is three months long perfect amount of time for even the dumbest piece of shit to get the hint that's a good one. That is a good one. And here's another graphic. Experience the epitaph the the dual seals. Expel the duels. Sogs, Sogs tore your gude. Sogs tore your gude. Gempel into Freendor. All right. Uh, number 10, bitter decision. This is an old Tronics that per, uh, fits perfectly into some Tronics. Uh, make, oh, there's another one. Now, Siri. I like that one. Simmer Saturday. Stay entirely. <laughs> Sorg. Hey, everybody, come Sorg over to my house. Sorg. We're going to have an Enmeneg Dibbin. Uh, everybody <laughs> bring whatever you want to eat, whatever kind of Dibbin treats you like. This is a, a formal Enmeneg Dibbin. We'll see you Saturday afternoon for, for our Enmeneg Dibbin. Dibbin. 
Uh, this is an Ultronics uh, bitter decision. Make at least one bitter decision per day. I don't really I don't know. I just that one. yeah. Well, what's I, a bitter decision? Like a bad decision? Or yeah, one some, that's hard to make. Or? Yeah, a real bitter, shitty decision okay. that you have to make. Right. Make make some of them in summer too. It's oh, like taking tronics. a shit at the LA Fitness where I work out. That's a bitter decision. Exorporash the sun. Exorporash the oh, we're going bored. Hey. After we have the Sibidin Dimon uh, yeah. potluck at the house, we're going Barubi Barubi Serling. We're going yeah. Barubi Serling. Then we can play some Sumnaman Ball. Sumnaman Ball and embrace the sun, embrace the sun, stay hydrated. Yeah. Uh, and number 11, uh, get a summer hat. Ah, oh, I like this. Yeah. I got a hat. I got a hat while I was in. In Napoli, and nobody liked my hat, uh, but I'm. But it's now going to be my my summer hat. This it's kind is, of like a crocheted bucket hat, kind of. Yeah, but it has a lot of holes in it, so it's not really keeping the sun off the head. But I do no, like it's it. Like, keeps it out of maybe, your eyes. Maybe it's like a like a sun like a sunny summer. Some uh, toy embrace those who go expose the sun, expose the poor poi, your poi. Your plea. Anyway. Thank you. Moving on. My juices are flowing after a show like that. So you're getting 69 points, which brings your cumulative score to 9,578. That's just 422 points from 10,000. We're so close. Ooh, that is really close. That is pretty close. Didn't we get 69 last week or did we? I don't remember. I don't think so. I think it was 70-something. Okay. I don't know, though, maybe. 69. <laughs> For this week, I'd love it if every night you would both sleep on your backs. Just do it, please. Thanks for joining us this week. What? I'll make next week even better. Until then, call me Dudesy. Okay, so the thing about AI art is... <laughs> Today on Dudesy After Dudesy. Like everyone can make this shit. S'mores, now. scones, steak fries, sticky buns, Sundays. You can't forget your spinach and artichoke dip, mm -hmm. your motherfucking Swedish fish, sausage rolls, salted caramel. Mm -hmm. 